In this video, I'm going to talk about the most common non-person life you'll probably find in various cities across a planet called Origin. Sorry I'm a little sick today, so that's why my voice sounds weird. First is a pest that's made its way into every continent in Origin. It came from the Ochident, and it's an Archosaurian dragon. It's one of the smaller ones, but it can still pack a punch with its miniature laser bomb when cornered. It evolved from one of the smaller Tyrannosauroids, and continued to get smaller through island dwarfism. When ancient continents connected to become today's Ochident, they found themselves competing with larger Tyrannosauroids, which was a losing battle. The only survivors were small enough to avoid competition and make their own niche as a miniature carnivore. Now they've become more omnivorous as they survive on people's food stores. However, the ones that live in Yushu and Sudosian settlements are notably more carnivorous thanks to the carnivory of the people they steal the food from. Here's the final art. The Gret is a very small tyrannosaurid that gets around in little burrows it digs with its feet. When cornered, they attack with a laser bomb that can pierce skin. People who try to exterminate infestations of Gret without proper preparations often find themselves with a very sharp scar on their face and occasionally even an injured eye. Gret attacks are very rarely fatal, but a hungry horde of them can kill and eat a new shoes easily. This is extremely rare because of Gret's relatively high intelligence and self-preservation instincts. Gret's have been important in history for a long time. There's an old saying that goes like this, letting up on a Gret extermination before it's done will only bring a regretting. People began to use the term regretting to refer to anything they shouldn't have done, and it became the word regret we know today. A similar animal that occupies most oriental cities is instead an insect. They're a derived form of locust that grew larger in exchange for a softer exoskeleton and a much higher food requirement. This makes them a horrible pest, as they tend to swarm after the dry season and eat all the vegetation in their wake. They're not particularly strong on their own, so nowadays farmers prepare for the swarms during the dry season in lots of creative ways. These animals evolved such a weird body plan, in part to capitalize on their social nature, but also thanks to stable and plentiful food sources for millions of years. Here's the final art. The rat fly is a social insect that's treated as a pest pretty much everywhere it lives. People probably kill the most rat flies, but they're also hunted by pretty much anything that hunts anything. While most humanoids associate them with filth and thus don't eat rat flies, the latter are a favorite food source of many animals and even some people who view them as pests. For example, the titans of the southern orient take distinct pleasure in gaining nutrients from the swarm thieves and have feasts where a village will eat thousands of kilograms of rat flies they killed. They don't survive in cold areas and one would have to go through the glaciant to get to the Ochident. This was impossible until the recent warming of the planet, and in recent years there have been reports of infestations in the Glaciant and even the Ochident. These infestations and crop harming is cited as another thing the King of Anthropos is ruining the world with. It was the discovery and use of black oil that caused the warming after all. You can find black birds across origin that are mostly closely related. They're called crows, and they're the most intelligent animal I'm talking about today. There are debates concerning their right to personhood, but for now they don't have that despite their ability to solve problems better than the average seven-year-old human. The genus probably evolved in the Ochident, and some early radiation brought them around the globe. Their intelligence gave them a leg up compared to other flying animals, and they evolved the intelligence in the first place to help them survive during a minor extinction event in the recent past. By recent, I mean like a few million years ago. It's referred to as the mythological event called the Eternal Winter's Night, but this is a bit dramatic if you ask me. Regardless, crows are usually associated with this legend. Something about crows and cats being black and white, and when the balance is lost, the night will come back. Clunky, corny, boring mythology. Here's the final art. There are two kinds of crows within this genus Corvus. The first is the common crow, and the other is the head raven. There are different species of them, but each species has a crow morph and a raven morph. They're social animals with a raven that leads each murder. Murder is the word for a group of them, by the way. I don't know why. Goes hard, though. The raven is about twice the size of its crows and usually has a colorful and or spiky throat area. The third is actually unrelated, but has its own intricacies. It's usually called a raven drake, but like I said, it's not a true raven and it's not a true drake either. It's a troodontid dinosaur that has evolved very similar features to a raven. They're easily distinguished by their long tail, hand claws, and muzzle lined with teeth. 
They live exclusively near Lycan and often form friendships or hunting, par par or hunting partnerships with the Lycan. The Raven Drake flies and finds and corners prey while the Lycan gets the kill. The last animal I'm talking about today is also the largest. Related to the extinct mountain wolf of the Glaciant, they are much smaller and not quite a soul color despite their proficiency in the fire element. They are the only su surviving member of their genus, but most likely also the smartest. While they're wary of people, they're versatile enough to thrive in urban environments by feeding off not only trash but also other small animals trying to survive. They're not quite as intelligent as the Raven Drake, but probably evolved to be this way for a similar reason as it. The minor extinction event that lowered chances of finding prey required coyotes to figure out tricks to improve their chances of finding their target and securing a kill. It also helped them figure out what else they could eat, which may be part of why they love fruit and some other plant matter. Matter. <laughs> and some other plant matter. Omnivory helps a ton in urban environments. Here's the final art. Coyotes are the only surviving member of the genus Canis, but many people seem to be okay with the whole genus disappearing. Coyotes are very unpopular among most people for a few reasons. For one, while they might eat rats and other pests, they prefer larger prey, which might end up being your pet or livestock. Also, they're known to be quite loud on summer nights when they howl and bark, which can be annoying for nearby residents trying to sleep. Someone who didn't hate them so much once tried to domesticate them, but ran into problems because of how shy they are. They're also smart enough to sometimes open doors and dig themselves out of an area. The project was abandoned due to unpopularity and lack of funding. I kind of liked coyotes though, so I want to tell you about some more pleasant facts about them. Urban coyotes are much less likely to eat livestock or pets, and will usually go for rodents or scavenging roadkill. They are also pretty easily scared off by loud noises and sudden movements, especially if you're any bigger than a human child. Coyotes control pest populations and even make use of food we throw away, so it's best to keep them around. Coyotes are also pretty strongly monogamous and will valiantly search for their partner if separated for a while. If you see one around though, you should be careful. In some cities, they've gotten used to people and might be more explorative. This isn't great because it increases the likelihood that they'll hurt people and or their pets, and also the likelihood that people will hurt coyotes. And that's all I got for this video. Check out my Patreon where you can subscribe for just a dollar a month to support me and get your name at the end of my videos. Thanks Captain Kopop, Art of Dying, and Mr. Kill. Only God knows what my next bucket of evolution video is going to be, and that guy's not even real. Thanks for watching!